We only remember anywhere from 20 to 30% of what we hear. But on a weekly basis, most students are spending upwards to 15 hours in class. That means at best, we're probably only actually retaining four and a half hours worth. That is a huge waste of time. But what if I can show you a way where you can easily save yourself anywhere from six to upwards to seven and a half hours a week. If you're interested in this video, we're gonna talk about speed listening. All right guys, what is going on? Lux here from the MD Journey, helping you succeed on your journey with less stress. In today's video, I wanna talk about a concept that I loved using and really helped me as a medical student, and that's the concept of speed listening. Now, if you're anything like the general population, you probably hate going to class because you're not an auditory learner. About 25% of the population actually is. And that means when you go to class, you go through one hour or three hours of lecture a day, you're not really retaining much, but you feel like you have to be there because you hope you're not missing out. And when I started medical school, I was exactly the student. I would go to class and waste so much time and feel like I got nothing out of a typical day. And then I would go home and study countless hours to try to somehow make sense of what was going on in lecture. But then I realized the effectiveness of streaming for the classes that allowed me to do so. I went from streaming anywhere from at 1x to 1.5x to 2x, upwards to 3 to 4x over time and with some practice and realized how much time I was saving myself without losing very much on comprehension. And some of you watching this video are probably saying that's crazy. Listening to a lecture at 3x or 4x is ridiculous. You know, at best, you're probably considering yourself to be listening at 2x, maybe a little bit faster and still having to stop ever so often. But I promise you, your brain is totally capable of doing it. Let me give you some quick facts. So the average person speaks at about 150 words per minute, but we listen at around 300 words per minute. That means we listen twice as fast as the average person speaks. So while you're sitting in a lecture, that information just isn't coming as fast as your brain is able to process it. But listening at 2x may not be a big deal for most of you. You may already be doing it, but when I talk about listening at faster speeds, 2.5x, 3x, that's when you get a little bit uncomfortable. And it's just because you don't realize the potential that your brain is able to take. So let's think about populations that really have to rely on their listening. So that includes people that are blind or legally blind who really have to have a very acute sense of hearing. Those individuals, studies have shown them to listen up to three to eight X faster than the average human being. We mentioned 300 words per minute. They're going even faster than that. Now, obviously we're not trying to listen to a lecture at 8X, but it just shows you the potential of what your brain could do with a little bit of practice. When I started medical school, I was not listening at three to four X. That would be ridiculous. But over time, I'm gonna give you a method in a second. I was able to train my brain to listen at those faster speeds and still make it sound like it was just natural. So I want to give you a simple method for any of you guys that are still kind of doubting me and want to see if this is for you, you know, give this method a shot. So step number one, and I found this to be really crucial, is to just skim your slides. Now I didn't say skim the lecture because that doesn't mean reading the syllabus, but if you have like PowerPoint slides that are already available to you, go ahead and skim them. The reason for doing this is to just get comfortable with the flow of the argument. You want to know where they're going to start, what the middle transition points are going to be, and then what the final conclusions are. That way when you're listening at a faster speed, you can recognize those tidbits and know what part of the presentation they are just in case you ever get lost. Now step number two is to start at a comfortable speed for the first one to three minutes. There's obviously going to be speakers that are going to talk very fast and some that are really, really slow. And so you just want to get a natural cadence of how fast they talk. So for the first th one to three minutes, go to a speed that you're comfortable with. Maybe that's 1.5, maybe that's 1x, maybe that's 2x for some of you guys. And at your comfortable speed, get an idea of how fast or slow they appear to you. That's going to give you an idea of how far you can take your speed listening. Now the next step is really where the magic happens. I want you to increase your listening speed to slightly above comfort. So if you naturally listen at right at 1.7, maybe start at like 2.3, 2.4, and it may seem fast, but I want your brain to get a chance to get acclimated because then you're gonna take step number four and slightly come down from that speed where things are gonna become a lot more natural. You know, when somebody's speaking really fast, we just really need them to slow down a little bit versus, you know, all the way. So if you're somebody who tends to listen at 2x, go to 2.5 and then slowly slow down and you'll notice at around 2.3, 2.2, 2 
you'll still be able to understand what they're saying and it'll feel natural to you. And that's how I was able to train my brain to naturally listen to a lecture at like 3x. Um, initially, I got comfortable at like 2.5 and that's usually where students stop pushing themselves. And I was like, well, let's see what I can do. So I took it up to 3.2 and that's really where the lectures got to be really fast. So I slowed it down, but not all the way, just a little bit. And so now 3, 3x is where my new threshold, my new normal is. And that's where I can listen to a majority of my lectures. So it's going to take a little bit of training, but you can get there. Now, before I move on to the tools that can help you speed listen to lectures and really anything, um, I want to quickly address that one person at least that's watching this video saying, this is crazy. This is not going to work for me. This is stupid. And I'm not going to try it because my scores and my grades are going to suffer. If you are at least one of the auditory learners that are in that 25 to 30 percent that like to listen to lecture and feel like that's where you get a majority of your learning, then speed listening can still be for you. You may not want to go to the extremes that I do because this is where you get a majority of your learning. So you want to make sure you give some time to it. But if you're in that 70 to 75 percent of the population who is really just going to class because you feel like you have to or you need to, but really doesn't get very much retention from it, then I encourage you to use speed listening because then you can use more time to do what works. Now, if you're not sure what works, I'm going to give you a free download down below in the description of a spreadsheet I've created that's going to be able to identify the different study techniques that you're doing and basically help you visualize what is your highest impact studying technique. Everyone has a different one, and so use a spreadsheet down below. It's helped a lot of my coaching students. I'm sure it'll help you. And if you're not in the auditory learning group after doing the spreadsheet, then it may be to your benefit to learn a little bit more speed listening. Because remember, you can save yourself anywhere from six to seven hours a week of not listening to lecture. You can use that time instead to do the techniques that work. Maybe you're somebody that likes to learn through group studying or somebody that likes to learn through drawing on a whiteboard, whatever it may be. You still don't have to spend those extra six to seven hours studying. You can spend a chunk of it and then use that other time for free time and just for you. So if you need more free time in your life, try speed lift. Now let's quickly transition into the tools that can help you speed lesson. Now, if you use Google Chrome as your main browser, there's plenty of great plugins that can help you speed pretty much any type of video. Um, I'll go ahead and put some links in the description, but then all you have to use is some shortcuts on your keyboard, like plus or minus, and you can speed up a YouTube video, most lectures. Um, they just have to be a specific format, but luckily most videos are happen to be in this format. So give those uh, plugins a shot if you use Google Chrome. Other tools that you can use to speed up your listening are things like VLC player for your desktop. Um, if you can download your lectures or if you're listening to something that's already an mp3 file, then go ahead and use VLC and use the speed function to increase it anywhere from 2 to 3x and then listen to your lectures in that format. And speed listening doesn't have to just be for class. So there's other great things such as audiobooks and podcasts, which you may want to obtain information from, uh, but don't want to listen for an hour. So you can use things like uh, Google Podcasts, which can help you speed up things to 2 to 3x. Um, give that a shot if you're a podcast listener. Um, things like Audible, if you like to listen to audiobooks, um, you can definitely um, use their own built and functions and also YouTube. YouTube, as many of you guys probably know, has that you know uh, function in the bottom to be able to speed any video um, up to 2x. And then if you use some of the plugins from Chrome, you can speed them up even in fact. But all the tools that I've used and I recommend you guys try out will all be linked down in the description. And if you made it this far in the video, I want to give you just a little bit of motivation in case you're interested in trying speed listening or you're listening pretty fast, but you want to try to do it a little bit faster. You know, when I was a first year medical student, as I mentioned, I started at 1x, I started going to class. That was not working for me. I got up to 2 to 3x and I was able to easily cut off up to like 7 to 9 hours in a weekly basis. I was able to then use that time to then use the study techniques that do work. Again, that worksheet will be down in the description below for any of you guys that want to figure out what that is for you. And then I was able to use that other extra time, it's about half of it, as free time to relax, to enjoy my life outside of medical school. And outside of medical school, I can also use speed listening to improve my life. I love reading, but I also love listening to audiobooks. And sometimes when I have a long drive back home to visit my family, I usually will put in a new audiobook I'm interested in and finish the book on the same drive and sometimes also finish another book on the way back. So this week I've already finished two and it's only Wednesday. So you can only imagine the big impact, a small change in just how fast you listen can do to your life. But that's it for this video, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Remember before we leave, uh, free download to the optimal 
optimal studying worksheet down below in the description. So make sure you check it out. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you guys later. Take care, my friends.